Cellular technology, it's everywhere. I mean, nowadays, who could really live without their cell phone, right? Jeremy? I know I couldn't. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't want to disappoint all my TikTok followers. <laughs> well, you better get to it quick, because I think it's going to be banned pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sadly, you might be right there. But listen, this same cellular technology, well, it plays a huge role in industrial automation as well. Without a doubt. So stick around as we explore this wonderful wireless world. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Jeremy. And I'm Karen. Today, we're going wireless. And more specifically, we're going cellular. Now, everyone knows a little bit about cellular technology, because most of us use a cell phone every single day in our personal and professional lives. And as you know, smartphones aren't just for talking. They have become our cameras, our music providers, our GPS systems. You name it, and there's pretty much an app for it. Right. And just like your cell phone is probably your most used device for connecting to people and things in your personal life, cellular technology is used all the time in industrial and process applications. So today, we're going to take a look at some of the most common cellular devices used in the industry, when and where they're used, and some of the buzzwords you'll hear when you talk cellular. So to get started, let's have a quick history lesson. Believe it or not, cellular technology has been around for a long time, about 40 years. Do you remember those old bag phones, Jeremy? Mm. <laughs> no, no, actually I don't. How did I know you were gonna say that? Uh, actually, I don't either. My stepdad had one. Oh, yeah, yeah totally, I'm sure your stepdad <laughs> totally had one. Actually, for real, I'm not quite that old. Anyway, as I was saying, first generation cellular technology, or 1G as we now call it, dates back to the 80s. Back then, analog technology and cell phones were really just used for talking. In the 90s, cellular went digital and texting was born. But it really wasn't until the turn of the century and the development of 3G technology when things really started to take off. 3G allowed larger amounts of data to be transmitted via cellular. Suddenly, phones and devices started becoming smart and usage shot up, both in the private sector and in industry because you could just do more with them. Right, absolutely. Instead of just being able to send a message or maybe a picture, 3G allowed a lot more devices to be connected via the internet. And at the same time, like Karen just said, cellular devices were getting smarter. Using an app on your smartphone or tablet, well, that meant you could then visualize conditions or monitor and control a pump that might be hundreds of miles away, right from the luxury of your smart device. Exactly. But then, after 3G opened the door, 4G LTE blew it off its hinges. <laughs> In the 2010s, 4G and the expanded network of cell towers that were built truly introduced high-speed data. This meant we could now reliably do things like stream videos and music with cell coverage in most of the US and around the world, whereas before, coverage might have been a little spotty. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Remember that commercial? I do. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you watching out there probably remember that one. Absolutely. And now 5G is coming with even higher data speeds and extremely low latency, even with millions of devices on the network. Pretty soon, the entire city of New York could simultaneously stream your TikToks in real time, Jeremy. That, that would be absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, kind of sounds like a bizarre sci-fi movie. I know, doesn't it? I, I love it. It's fantastic. <laughs> you would. Anyway. Right about now, you're probably wondering why we just went all through that history, right? I mean, who really cares as long as it works? Well, it's good to have a basic understanding of the different cellular generations. Not only to know their limits, but because some of them are becoming obsolete. And that's going to have a huge impact on the cellular world. We mentioned earlier that 3G technology really opened the door for cellular being used in industrial applications. What that means is a lot of 3G devices were installed in the field or in machines. Well, guess what? Now 3G is becoming obsolete. Right, and what obsolete actually means in this case is that all the cellular providers, like Verizon, 
AT&T, and others are all going to stop supporting their 3G technologies. This graphic shows two of the largest providers, and as you can see, they will shut down their 3G technologies by the end of this year and early 2022. That shutdown means all of the 3G devices installed out there in the field will no longer work, and those will all need to be replaced or upgraded with 4G LTE or even 5G devices. Right, and just to show you the scale of those installations, here's a chart that shows the number of connections in just the U.S. utilities and industrial sector alone. We're talking tens of millions of connections over the years, and that equates to a whole lot of cellular devices that need to be swapped out or upgraded. Right, so devices. We've mentioned them several times today. So let's take a closer look at what we're talking about and touch on how and when they are typically used. First up, we have a cellular router, like this. Now this one happens to be a 4G router, as noted on the side, but soon there will be 5G versions that are very similar. Cellular routers are devices that allow users to connect to the internet or establish VPN connections via a cellular network. Here's an example of a classic machine-to-machine -machine application where the sensor data is being transmitted to another machine. Now, just like your cell phone, a cellular router will have a SIM card inside it. That allows you to establish a connection to a cell tower via a cellular provider. And we should note that just like your cell phone comes with a bill, there are monthly service fees for industrial data plans. So wireless cellular isn't free. That's why, although cellular is fantastic for spanning the globe and secure remote connectivity, it may not be ideal for every wireless application. But we'll get to that in another episode. Yeah, now back to routers. Cellular routers are typically used in machine-to-machine -machine applications like you see in this graphic of a SCADA system. Within the world of routers, there are also advanced versions that provide network security, redundancy, and come with software to help manage those functions. Cybersecurity is extremely important after all. I mean, Karen, can you imagine if the entire US grid was somehow compromised or an attacker cut off the whole country? Yeah, I mean, talk about a bizarre sci-fi movie. Yeah, really. But what's really scary is that it's actually possible. So it's a really good thing that these advanced devices can help protect against that. Again, these routers can be 4G or even 5G, and the basic premise of connecting machines to machines is the same. However, they add a ton of functionality, like cybersecurity. And because of that added functionality, they will need configuration, whereas a traditional router is more plug and play. Right. Machine to machine applications can vary, but most, they tend to be connected 24 seven, where data is transmitted and logged for monitoring purposes. You can also set parameters so that someone is alerted if something goes wrong. Here, you can see that something happened to a pump down in South Carolina. Luckily, our technician has a cell phone handy and he can turn that pump off all the way from Arizona just by sending a text. Amazing. So that leads right into the second major application for cellular products, and that is technician to machine communication. Here, the same devices are used cellular routers, but you will also have some sort of computer or controller involved with an HMI like you see here. These applications tend to be on an as-needed basis versus being 24-7 like machine-to-machine -machine applications. Technicians typically perform software and firmware upgrades remotely and, of course, troubleshoot any problems that may come up. For some of the more advanced connections, technicians might even use the cloud. Ooh, wow, <laughs> nice. Hey, didn't we do an episode on the cloud a little while ago? Well, yes, yes we did, Jeremy. Nice. <laughs> nice shameless plug there, Karen. Thanks. <laughs> and as we often say, there's a whole lot more we could get into with regard to cellular technology, like the detailed differences between 4G and 5G. But we'll save that for another episode. Yeah, so let's sum up the main takeaways for today. First, cellular technology well, it's everywhere, and it's becoming more and more integrated into industrial applications. Next, 3G is becoming obsolete, 
And soon, all of those 3G devices out there will need to be updated or replaced with 4G or 5G devices. And finally, cellular technology basically eliminates the barrier of distance. Cellular routers with various levels of sophistication are used for remote connectivity, whether it's machine to machine or human to machine. This eliminates the need for people to travel to sites for upgrades or troubleshooting. Great stuff, huh? So I think that just about does it. And guess what? Time for me to get back to TikToks. <laughs> of course. <laughs> if you liked this episode, please connect with that like button and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our new episodes. You can even watch them on your cell phone and you can check out Jeremy's TikToks. That would be great. Nice. Thanks everyone. We'll see you next time.